Welcome to TSPN for today. Let's take a look at our news headlines. Jackson City Council approved a deficit budget Monday while awaiting restoration of lost local triple flip taxes and fees. A Rancho Cordova man arrested twice in Amador County for possession of stolen property has alleged links to nine regional burglaries. And Jackson Rancheria Casino will give one of its Dreamcatchers club members $45,000 in a drawing tonight at 8 p.m. Thursday, June 28th. And AFPD board okays traditional helmets for firefighters' horses. For the firefighters and horses and burros are, are available for adoption in Sacramento. In the second half of the news, I'll speak with Supervisor Ted Novelli about Amador County budget issues. Stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Jackson City Council voted 3 to 2 Monday to approve a $3.36 million with a $125,000 deficit for fiscal year 2012 2013 as the city awaits a return of funding by the legislature or the Senate budget. And Councilman Maine, Wayne Garibaldi and Mayor Pat Crew dissented. Garibaldi earlier asked what would happen if they did not approve the budget since the budget year ends June 30th and City Manager Mike Daly said the city would continue operating with the existing budget in place. Councilman Keith Sweet said Jackson was one of the few cities in the county that has a budget you can read and count on and he wondered why Garibaldi would ask that question. Garibaldi said I probably can't vote for a budget with a negative number. We're $125,000 short and restoration of triple flip funds are not a sure thing. Daly said the closest thing to a sure thing is the governor's reimbursement in the budget bill which would give Amador County and its cities $1.5 million including $100,000 to Jackson and $1.1 million to the county. Daly said the status of Allison Huber's Assembly Bill 1191 has him not quite as 95 percent confident in it as he was since it was placed in suspense on Monday by the Senate Appropriations Committee. A consultant said suspense means it needs minor rewording. Daly said, Cruz said a healthy city is one with reserves, but he was inclined to vote for it because the rainy days are here. And Daly said a typical city reserve fund is 20%, and for Jackson that would be $690,000, so we're above that. Reserves in the draft budget were $793,000. With legislative fixes, Jackson could get $100,000 to $300,000, he said, but it's going to be a continuing saga. The budget lost a $1,000 COPS grant, which means the city must use other funds to pay a police officer's salary and avoid layoff. He said negotiations with employees allowed reduction of insurance costs by allowing employees to choose a different policy. They will still get 100% paid insurance, but have smaller physician pool. He recommended boosting the city's share of participation fees with Amador County Recreation Agency from 50% to a full share payment to 80%. He also mentioned a return of to paid parking on Main Street now that storefronts were filling. Daly was optimistic that a three-year increase in sales tax revenue would continue with the addition of Grocery Outlet and the early August opening planned for Tractor Supply Company and National Hotel's planned July reopening means the iconic lodging and dining anchor for Main Street should help attract more visitors to Jackson and Booth both transient occupancy tax and sales tax in the upcoming year. A Rancho Cordova man was arrested twice over 10 days in Amador County for possession of stolen goods and drugs and linking him to at least nine vehicle burglaries in the region. Amador County Under Sheriff Jim Wagner released details Wednesday on multiple arrests of Vitaly Nikolovlevich Kulenich. 27 of Rancho Cordova, stemming first from a June 8th burglary at Anytime Fitness. An unknown suspect reportedly smashed the rear window of a vehicle and stole the wallet and cell phone. An Amador County Sheriff's deputy using the digital security system at Anytime Fitness identified a possible suspect vehicle, a brown sedan with a distinctive black bumper. On June 15th, the Amador deputy saw the vehicle on Highway 49, stopped it, and identified the driver as Kalinich, who was on searchable probation in Sacramento County for theft. The vehicle registration was expired by almost seven years. A search revealed suspected heroin, suspected meth prescription narcotics, a glass smoking pipe, and a realistic-looking BB air pistol. Also found was a hunting license from the wallet reported stolen June 8th from Anytime Fitness. 
An iPod Touch reported stolen to Davis Police, keys stolen from Delta Flooring in Sacramento, and burglary tools. Kalinich was arrested, booked in Amador County Jail, and charged with transportation and possession of a controlled substance and possession of narcotics, stolen property, and burglary tools. He posted a $20,000 bond for release. A secondary search of the vehicle revealed a hidden compartment with numerous stolen items, including driver's licenses, passports, social security cards, credit cards, and a diamond ring valued at $1,840. Also found was a video camera documenting Kalinich's involvement in stealing vehicles and using controlled substances. Detectives recovered stolen property related to an additional nine vehicle burglaries in Sacramento, Rancho Cordova, Sacramento County, El Dorado Hills, El Dorado County, West Sacramento, and Nevada. Probation searches in Sacramento and Rancho Cordova found several firearms, an assault weapon, a stolen gym bag, and a possible stolen iPad. About 7.40 p.m. Monday, June 25th, the Sheriff's Department responded to a report that a man had just stolen merchandise from a Kmart and fled in a tan Mercedes-Benz sedan. A deputy found the vehicle in Amador Plaza and detained it with two occupants, Andrew Lee Hunter Morass, 20, of Rancho Cordova, and Kalinich. The investigation revealed that Morass had stolen a pair of shoes from Kmart. The shoes were recovered and Morass was issued a citation for theft. The deputy also found a checkbook, driver's license, and vehicle title belonging to a couple in Antelope who positively identified items stolen from their vehicle June 23rd. Kalenich was again arrested and booked into the Amador jail charged with possession of stolen property and commission of a felony while on bail for a pending felony. Bail was set at $45,000 and a declaration was filed by detectives requesting the court examine the source of Kalenich's bail. Detectives were checking on other property found in Kalenich's possession to determine if it was also stolen. Jackson Rancheria Casino Resort announced Wednesday that someone will win $45,000 cash at the Jackson Rancheria today, that is Thursday, June 28th. Rancheria publicist Mark Moretto announced the promotion, saying the final drawings for Jackson Rancheria's Big Spring Cash Fling will be held starting at 6 p.m. Thursday, June 28th, and one winner is guaranteed to go home with $45,000 cash. Jackson Rancheria Dreamcatchers Club members earn a drawing entry for every 100 points earned between 12.01 a.m. and 8 p.m. Thursday, June 28th. The drawings start at 6 p.m. with 20 people guaranteed to win $500 in free slot play. The final prize given away at 8 p.m. started at $15,000 and has grown to a guaranteed $45,000 jackpot. The winner has five minutes to claim the big prize or another winner will be drawn until someone claims the cash. Jackson Ranch Rio Casino Resort is located at 12222 New York Ranch Road in Jackson. And the Amador Fire Protection District Board of Directors last week approved district policy to allow for the use of traditional style firefighting helmets by personnel under certain circumstances and only after the personnel sign a waiver. AFPD Battalion Chief Dave Bellevue said the traditional style helmet was a symbol of tradition for firefighters and safety is an issue. The policy would require certification of the helmets by Occupational Safety and Health Administration or the National Fire Protection Association. He used adoptions of policy changes to allow the traditional helmets. Supervisor Vice Chairman Richard Forrester said the traditional helmet is a lot heavier. Supervisor Brian Onetto said the traditional helmet is not approved for wildland firefighting and firefighters can use their issued helmet in wildland firefighting. Bellevue said the district is currently buying two helmets for each member of the district fire department. One helmet is for structural fires and one is for wildland fires. Supervisor John Plath said it comes down to a style issue. Bellevue said under proposed policy to wear the traditional helmet, personnel must, weigh, must sign a waiver in case it falls off on the way to the fire. The board advised staff to change policy to allow traditional helmets, but noted that employees must purchase their own traditional helmets, subject to policy. The board passed the policy change on a four-to-one vote with Plaz dissenting. The Bureau of Land Management announced Wednesday that residents of the Sacramento area will have the opportunity to add a horse or burrow to their families on July 14th when BLM brings its wild horse and burrow adoption program to Sacramento's Horsemen's Association in Sacramento. BLM Central California Public Affairs Officer David Christie said, 
14 horses from yearlings to four-year-olds will be offered for adoption. They come from the high rock areas, Fox Hog, Rock High, we make that high rock, Nut Mountain, Wall Canyon, and Bittner Herd Management Areas. It also features five burrows from the Twin Peaks Herd Management Area. Manager of BLM's Susanville Wild Horse and Burrow Corrals, Doug Staccata, said the animals are healthy and ready to train. They have been vaccinated against all common equine diseases, including rabies and West Nile virus. BLM provides full health care records to adopters. To qualify, adapters must be at least 18 years old and residents of the United States. Adopted animals must be kept in corrals that offer at least 400 square feet per animal, surrounded by six-foot pipe or board fences. Five-foot fences are allowed for horses under two years old. Four-foot fences are allowed for burrows. Two-sided roof shelters are required. Adopters receive title to their animals after providing a year of good care. Public Affairs Officer David Christie said wild horses and burrows are protected by federal law. The Wild and Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act, which requires the BLM to maintain wild populations in balance with other range users, including wildlife and domestic livestock, so that food and water sources are sustained and rangelands are conserved. For additional information, contact BLM toll-free at one 866 Six four Mustangs. That's four six eight seven eight two six. Or the Litchfield Corrals at five thirty two five four sixty five seventy five. And horses can be previewed at two to five p.m. Friday, July thirteenth. The event runs eight a.m. to five p.m. Saturday, July fourteenth. And stay with us. When I come back, we'll have Supervisor Ted Novelli with us. So stay tuned here on TSPN News. We watch Amador County's number one news and sports leader. SPM. Hi everyone and welcome back. Let's take a look at our weather for today. It's a uh, hot day out there, but it's a lot similar as yesterday, but a little higher, 90 degrees, a low of 55, winds west at 6 and 9 miles an hour. Friday, sunny high of 87, low of 55, winds out of the west 5 to 8 miles an hour. And on Sunday, make that Saturday, sunny high of 87, low of 55. Air quality index report, ozone levels moderate today at 77 and moderate tomorrow, Friday at 90. And Highway 88 from Amador San Joaquin County line to Highway 124, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday through Friday, June 28th through the 29th. 20 minute delays, one way traffic control for slope clearing. Stony Creek Road, Amador County Road, maintenance 6.30 to 3.30 p.m. Thursday, June 28th. 20 minute delays for overlay. And uh, that's really all the time we have for today. So I'd like to thank you for watching TSPN's news. We'll see you again next time on TSPN.